And this is where you're going to have to super concentrate and where I'm going to have to super concentrate because this is complicated stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to try and pretend I know how all this no. tech works. What'd but I, do, did right? do a, I did do a considerable amount of research before okay. the show to try and explain it as best as I possibly can. So oh. bear with me on this one. So this is all about uh, these super small, thin form factor VR glasses that were kind of teased uh, online this week. You know, publications like Upload and Road to VR wrote articles about them. And it's basically from Facebook Reality Labs. So it's from the research uh, and development department of Facebook, um, you know, and could potentially lead to a, an Oculus product in the future. Hmm. Um, but let's talk about what we know right now with current generation VR headsets, because... They're quite big and bulky, and although some, like the Valve Index, are very comfortable to wear for long periods of time, it's not as lightweight or as comfortable as wearing just a pair of glasses. You know, you certainly know when you're wearing a VR headset, whereas, you know, where if you wear glasses, they tend to sort of, like, disappear, and you forget that you're wearing them after a period of time. Mm. So, this week, Facebook's Reality Labs division released a 14-page research paper on holographic optics for thin and lightweight virtual reality glasses. Now, these aren't AR glasses, these are VR glasses. So this is a long-term research and development project, so don't expect this tech to be available anytime soon, but it is interesting to get an insight into going, what's going on behind the scenes, nevertheless. So Facebook Reality Labs see a vision of the future where people want to use VR for productivity and social interactivity. And like we had the comment earlier on, like, do we feel like VR is ready for productivity now? And our answer was pretty much no. But Facebook Reality Labs want that answer to be yes in the future, of course. And what they need to push beyond what's available now on the market um, is a push forward in terms of tech to achieve this kind of wider consumer adoption. And they say that this will require smaller and a lighter form factor, which can exceed the performance of conventional displays near to the limit of human visual acuity. So they're saying we want it smaller, lighter, and even better optics in terms of what we can achieve right now. So according to the paper, a big part of moving forward and reducing the size and weight of these devices is changing the optics. Uh, as that is a big integral part of it, and that's why some of these headsets are so big and bulky. And the paper states, in this work, we propose combining polarization-based optical folding and holographic optics to gain the performance benefits of both while systematically working through the unique challenges of holography. In particular, we augment these technologies with laser illumination, directional backlighting, and color multiplexing to achieve the field of view and resolution expected of modern VR headsets while reducing the thickness to sub 10 millimeter to enable sunglasses like form factors. This is absolutely crazy, crazy stuff. So what they're saying here is that instead of a traditional lens like we have in every consumer VR headset on the market right now that focuses on the display inside the headset, what they're proposing is using a thin holographic film which acts as the lens. So instead of having a glass lens or a plastic lens that's quite thick um, and, and a distance away from the display to work properly and, and to, to get that, that uh, image in, in clarity and in focus by the user, they're saying that they can reduce that thick lens into a, like a paper thin holographic lens. So this is like uh, the holographic optic, it basically bends light like a lens, but is thin and almost like a transparent sticker. It's that thin and is placed uh, underneath the, uh, over the display, sorry. So with traditional refractive lenses that we have in current gen VR headsets, there needs to be a considerable amount of space between the lens and the display for the lens to focus correctly, right? But with a holographic lens, with polarization-based optical folding, light can be controlled to move between both backward and forward within the lens, so this empty space can be traversed multiple times, collapsing that space into a fraction of the original volume. So basically, it sounds super, super complicated, but if you think about it in this sense, the distance between uh, the lens and the display right now is like, you know, fairly big, you know, maybe a few inches. And what they're saying is by folding, um, uh, optical folding, they can bounce the light to traverse the similar amount of space, but it's folded, so it's it's doing it in a, in a smaller a smaller volume of space. And then, you, you know, you're reducing, essentially, the distance between the lens and the display down to like five millimeters instead of having that huge distance for the folk, for the lenses to actually work and mm. display the image correctly mm. in your you know to your eyes essentially. Um, so you've got this like holographic lens, which is completely mind blowing when you just think about it. And behind this holographic lens is a 2.1 inch 1600 by 1600 resolution LCD panel. 
and this results in the whole optic stack being less than 10 millimeters thick and weighing just 18 grams, which could be worn comfortably just like a pair of glasses, which is completely insane when you think about it. Um, the only thing that to take into account when we talk about this kind of technology, because it is revolutionary and it is amazing that we can strip it down to this bare minimum weight and size, but this is just the optics alone. We're not taking into account tracking, um, the laser illumination, which is required for this headset, the processing power, it's just the displays and optics at this point. You know, you need a freaking laser to power this thing right now. That's how crazy it is. And obviously, you know, in the future, the idea is that the processing will likely be done off the glasses to keep the form factor so small and would likely be done uh, in something like a, a, a belt puck, like we've seen with the Magic Leap. AR glasses, for example, you know, it's got these these glasses form factor, but it's got a processing puck which you clip to your belt. So we, we, we'll probably see something like that. Or even, you know, long term vision into the future, your mobile phone will be capable of, you know, processing uh, all the, 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 you know, the power that's needed to power one of these headsets, you know, I, because I, everyone's I was, got a mobile phone. I was like, maybe even wirelessly, but that's... Uh... Well, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky doing all this wirelessly. But yeah, yeah. you know, long term, of course, future, future, future. Yeah. Then yes, no, no cable is like, you know, that's yeah. Where you want to and go. this is, you know, when you start talking about Apple getting involved, you know, this is where you think, you know, these technologies are eventually yeah. going to collide and they have no choice but to get into this technology because, you know, to get involved, um, yeah. then this is what would be required. So it's kind of interesting. Of course, right now, these are all just prototype glasses, but they do actually work. This is the crazy thing. They, they are working prototypes. But the limitation right now is that they can only display a single color, which is green. But the green. paper suggests, yeah, green. That's Matrix. Uh, stuff, Matrix, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. And who's our favorite color? Green here in the F Reality podcast. Uh, that's also true. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but what they're saying is in this paper that with more engineering, they can actually open it up to a wider range of colors, even exceeding what's currently available with traditional displays that we know today, like the LCD and the OLED panels that we use in current gen headsets. Now, of course, we know it's going to be some time until we get our hands on this tech, um, as this is just research right now. But what impresses me the most about this paper is, is the fact that we're seeing all this innovation happen so quickly. You know, it's only been a few years, if you think about it, since, you know, the Oculus DK1 days. And if you think about how fast we're accelerating through this tech and to even get to a point where now this is just like a, a working prototype, mm -hmm. it's incredibly impressive. And... This also sort of comes back to Facebook as well, because without them and without the huge financial backing and the risk that they're taking on this technology, I don't think we would be advancing this quickly. So whether you you know, love or hate Facebook, you, know, you can't deny that what they're doing for the VR industry is going to be revolutionary and pave the way for the future of these headsets moving forward. It's like when we see... Michael Abrash talk about the future tech in, you know, his talks at Oculus Connect, for example, and you see like what he's talking about photogrammetry and very focal lenses, you know, we're clearly on a path right now that there's no turning back at this point. You know, we've already invested way too much time and energy to then just say, you know, VR is dead. Okay, let's all pack up and just forget about this. And let's revisit this in a few years time when the technology evolves, because we're already on this path and the future of VR and AR is inevitable at this point. Now, as we've seen with the current mainstream media, who are very dismissive of this tech right now, you know, it's clear that AR and VR will change the way we work and play forever. And it's not just a question of if, it's just a question of when. And, you know, I think this is incredibly impressive tech. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a question of not if when we see this type, type of tech in the future, it's just how far away is it from yeah. us right now? And, you know, maybe it's four years, maybe it's five years until we can actually wear yeah. a pair of these glasses ourselves. But it's just incredible that we're accelerating at this incredible pace right now. And, you know, this is what we're looking at in the future. Yeah. But it's it's good to, again, say that this these are VR glasses because mm -hmm. you just look at them as like, oh, sunglasses. So the, yeah. the, the video we're playing now too in green, it's like, oh, that's what I could see through it. But it's it's like, uh, for example, Huawei has also made, you know, uh, VR glasses and Unreal, et cetera. Unreal is, by the way, that's an AR one. So maybe I should not mention that one. But... Mm. Uh, it's like you know the display is just in the shape of of, of like uh, sunglasses or reading yeah. glasses. Um, yeah. So it's not AR, but it's small enough to not have that bulky, you know, for example, Quest where it's front heavy anymore. It's just like this nice compact uh, uh, pair of sunglasses. But, that, that's kind of when you where you want to go with that. Yeah, I mean, look, when you think about form factor, though, I mean, sunglasses. And actually, when we were just kicking off chat today. 
Someone said, Jesus, light leakage on a pair of sunglasses that are shaped like that is a problem. The way yep. I think about it is, I mean, wouldn't you prefer kind of the elastic band, you know, swimming goggles that were kind of bringing those panels, I suppose they would be, although tiny and using these tricks to get around the distancing, but that close, like literally just right there on your eyes, you know, and yeah. wouldn't that be the form factor in this? And we often see it in cyberpunk, you know, where they're talking about like future, um, you don't, you don't have the, the kind of flat sunglass, but you actually have these things that like hug your eyes. So look forward to see what that is. But I think the number one limiting factor for me would be, I know you were talking about the power source, Mike, but power source has to be the place where technology is going to hold this back because let alone the, the, the size of like, um, you know, uh, the storage, the CPU, all that kind of stuff and the heat dissipation needed, but actually what's going to power it. The battery technology has to be one of the main limiters. Well, I think battery technology is something that hasn't evolved as quickly as other tech industries, you know, and I think it's very difficult to solve that problem. But I do think, you know, certainly with this kind of small form factor that we'll see a push towards cloud computing. And it's something that Jason Rubin has talked about recently when talking about far visions of Oculus, you know, cloud computing is the future. And they've recently bought a cloud computing company, you know, not too long ago. Um, so it's clear that that's, they're on that path. And when you take all that, and, you know, I've talked about it previously with Shadow, you know, that I'm testing out in the background at the moment, yeah. you know, using a, a Shadow computer, which is essentially a, a PC in a data farm somewhere, you know, this yeah. one happens to be in Paris. And I'm basically using virtual desktop to wirelessly send, you know, Half-Life Alex to my Quest, which I'm using here in, you know, near London. It's pretty amazing that although the latency is, is pretty undesirable, the tech actually works. You know, it's just a case of improving that latency to mm. where it's unperceivable whether you're using a local machine or a, a machine in a data center somewhere. It's a very good and point. It reduces where, also the, yeah, it absolutely it cuts out the need for, for pushing power into the headset and you're just streaming to the device yeah. on your head. And of course, it, it, this also relies on other technologies, you know, like um, mm -hmm. 5G or whatever's next after that, Wi-Fi 6, and, you know, just to, to reduce the latency as much as physically possible. Mm -hmm. But these these technologies are evolving, and, and just like VR, they're evolving very quickly. And, uh, you know, the, the Ready Player One dream of just owning, a, you know, a display with a, an internet connection that's very lightweight and affordable, and, you know, all the heavy lifting is being done somewhere in the cloud, it is totally where we're, we're heading, you know, in yeah. the future. So it's super exciting. It's yeah. super, super but exciting. On the other side, like battery, you know, uh, battery improvements will hopefully come. And there is a lot of research going into that because, I mean, we have electric cars now. We have, of course, mobile phones that you need to charge every two days. I'm sure everyone wants to yeah. uh, use them for at least a week or so. Um, yeah. So there is a big push to that too. But yeah, cloud computing seems to be more in sight right now than... than uh, yeah, and it's amazing. Like I was super skeptical of cloud computing, but having actually tried it now with you know Shadow and the Quest, like I say, it's not perfect. You know, latency is definitely there, but the fact that the tech works and they're you know they're actively streamlining it um, for users now, um, you know, and to make it easier for them in the future. Is making you know right now, so that could also really help. You know, it, it, even if the next Quest, whatever it might be, you know, Quest Pro, Quest S, whatever you want to call it has Wi-Fi 6, for example, you know, using the Qualcomm XR2 chip or something similar, then that could unlock the possibilities of this cloud computing even further than what we're currently available now with the current hardware. So it is very exciting uh, indeed. But of course, you know, the thing is, you know, I, I don't necessarily like talking about future, future stuff that much uh, because it, it frustrates me where we're at right now as well to a certain degree. Um, and sometimes it just feels so futuristic and sci-fi that it's, you know, it's, it's unattainable. But I think, you know, this this tech is, and it, it's clear that they've got a working prototype. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting indeed. Um, by the way, if you want to read more about this tech and you're super, super into the nitty gritty details and you've got a big brain and you want to absorb all this incredible <laughs> research, go and check out the full 14 pages of it, uh, you know, in its full juicy detail at research.facebook. Oh, no, it's research.fb. Dot com and that's where the paper is uh, located if you want to check it out where, where where is this rowdy man if you need him right this sounded like <laughs> he a needed research, to do this uh, this sounded like a science episode it, yeah it's you doing it <laughs> honestly like it hurt my my brain getting my head around I this can, i can know. see that i mean it's a little swollen it is it is like <laughs> holographic <laughs> displays like holographic lenses you know it's, it's insane it's insane when, when they find the way to b break that barrier and get to full color gamut um that's going to be impressive yeah. but i i, I, I just there must be so many challenges there in terms of um, just representing the visual spectrum. 
yeah um in terms of the bounces that they need to make i just i can't even imagine how they're going to address that problem it, it seems yeah. insurmountable at this point so yeah but this is why facebook is so far ahead you know they're doing all this legwork uh for everyone else basically because all this research is publicly available you know any other company could pick this up and go oh that's interesting let's try and do this ourselves now so yeah. you know it's kind of cool that they're open about it to be honest um yeah. but yeah very interesting technology indeed that is the uh facebook reality labs new prototype which is a pair of vr glasses super small and lightweight form factor and could be the headset of the future mm -hmm.